So the next thing that you need, apart from the horse, apart from the bum bag, apart from the rewards, you need what we call a bridge. And there's so many people in positive reinforcement who I actually don't ever hear them talking about the bridge, even though they're using one. People who are doing it professionally are all using a bridge, but they don't uh, seem to talk about it. They talk about it, they use a different word. So I'll explain what a bridge is and why it's called a bridge. So when we are teaching any kind of behavior, we need to communicate with the horse that what they are doing is correct. And we need the horse to understand the very, very moment that it is correct. Not a few seconds later, not a few seconds before, because you always will end up with a different behavior altogether than what you're actually looking for if you don't use a bridge. So a bridge, first of all, let me explain why it's called a bridge. We have the behavior over here, the horse is doing the behavior, and then we have the reward. You can't always give the reward at the right time, meaning you can't communicate to the horse. That's the very moment. This moment is the moment, the best peak of the behavior. You can't quickly go, here, eat that biscuit right now, just as a communication tool. You can't do that in most cases. So the reason we have a bridge is there's the behavior, there's the reward, and the thing in between is a bridge. So it's the bridge between the behavior and the reward. I hope that makes sense. So that's why it's called a bridge. Now what a bridge is, this will make the penny drop if you still don't quite get what I'm talking about, is you see people using a clicker or a whistle. When I was a marine mammal trainer, we used to use a whistle, a dog whistle. It's a high pitched dog whistle that everybody can hear. Horses, dogs, humans, we can all hear it. But we used to use our tongue on the end of the whistle and it would be super short, sharp, like really, really short and sharp whistle. Um, it was handy because we could, we had it around our neck and we would just hold it in our mouth when we we're ready to use and we would be, we would have hands free. So we could always use a whistle anytime we needed it. Now there's people who use a clicker. Some people have a clicker on their belt, so it's hanging there. They grab for the clicker and click and it goes tick, tick. It's quite slow. So I have an opinion about a clicker. It's, it's fine, whoever wants to use a clicker, and if you're already using a clicker, that's perfectly fine if it works for you. I feel that it's a little bit slow. Um, it's not quite as short, sharp, and precise, and you don't always have your clicker with you. Um, the other thing is when you reach for a clicker, if you've got it hanging off you somewhere, this is a pre-cue, which means your horse will notice you going for the clicker before you actually click. And if you think that they don't notice things like that, hmm, they so do. <laughs> they notice everything. Things that humans don't notice, they notice. So this is one of the reasons I don't really like to use a, click a clicker is because if you're not going to hold it in your hands permanently, you need to reach for it and that is a free cue. So they know before you click that the click is coming, which could then degrade the behaviours because if they could stop doing, instead of reaching the peak of the behaviour, they could stop when they see you reach for it because you're getting ready to, to click at the peak. Um, so the other thing is, let's say you don't have a clicker hanging off your belt or wherever, you keep it in your hand permanently. I find that really problematic because we need two hands. Ideally, we don't want to be carrying something in our pocket. It's perfect if we just have two hands free, especially with horses, we never know what we might need to be holding or doing. It just makes life a lot easier. So that's why I don't use a whistle or a clicker. So now that I've explained why, what I don't use as a bridge, the, what I do use for a bridge is my voice. So the reason I use my voice is because I always have my voice with me. It means anywhere I go, anything I do, I can always, always have a bridge ready to go. I don't need to grab for it, no one sees it coming. And, and I can literally be doing anything with my horse any time of the day or wherever I am with them, not just in training sessions, not just, you know, w when we're deliberately out there to uh, be running through behaviours or tricks or whatever it is that you're wanting to teach your horse. It means that you have it all everywhere you go. So the next thing is the word that I use. I use the same word every time. 
which is extremely important. So I use the word good. And the reason I use the word good explains so many reasons why. Because first of all, good means good. It's kind of, it comes out naturally. So for most people, when, they're ha when their horse or animal would, of, of whatever kind is being good, you can't help but say good. So the fact that it comes naturally, there's a few things involved there. It makes life easy for everybody, first of all. And second of all, when you speak and have emotion about anything, your body screams, oozes that emotion. And so when I use the word good, my body says good, whether I know it or not, my body is saying good when I say good. Now, this for a horse is so handy because as we all know, horses and so many animals, in fact, most all animals use body language to communicate as well as sound. But they are so switched on to, um, to body language that humans just aren't, you know. Uh, what a human can pick up versus what your horse can pick up. The horse is way more onto it than any person would be. So when I say the word good, it, it's, it's written all over me, basically. So they don't just hear it, but they can also see it. So the other reason is using good when you say it, you need to mean it. So I say this about pretty much everything is say it like you mean it, do it like you mean it. And it just happens. That's how, that's how life works. It's about energy and focus and timing and whatever you say it, whatever you say, as long as you mean it, it will show. So now the next part about the fact that I use the word good is when I say good, I have to say the word in the same way every single time. It's the same as if you were using a whistle. The whistle is the same whistle every time. The click is the same click every time. So when you say good, it needs to be the same good every time. So what I mean by that is when, if you're choosing to use good as your bridge, you need to say good. If that's how you're going to say it, you need to say it the same way every time so that they understand because they'll associate that, that's the word. It's not you saying, good boy. <laughs> it's completely different. It's not the same at all. So you need to get into the habit. And this is another reason why I was suggesting you need to go through this for a whole week, the same lesson for a whole week, because I, a lot of people, they slip into it's, it, it, habits that they may have already formed where they naturally say, good boy. Well, it's not ideal to use that as your bridge because it takes, it's too long. Um, and it's not as precise. There are more advanced reasons why I can explain that in another video of why I save the good boy for later. Um, but in this lesson today being the very, very beginnings of positive reinforcement, simply use the word good. And if that's how you're going to say it, make sure you say it the same every time. Good. And then you give him a biscuit. <laughs> 